a useful idea in math and in life. A problem exists whether or not you know how to solve it. So what if we divide exponential expressions? What about quotients? Let's simplify 3 to the 5th divided by 3 to the 2nd. So 3 to the 5th is the product of 5 factors of 3. 3 to the 2nd is the product of 2 factors of 3. And we could remove common factors in numerator and denominator. And what's left is 3 factors of 3, which we can write in exponential notation. Likewise, a to the 8th is the product of 8 factors of a, a to the 4th is the product of 4 factors of a, and again, we can remove common factors in numerator and denominator, leaving 4 factors of a, which we can rewrite in exponential notation. And again, we should turn this into a formula to memorize. Remember, don't memorize formulas. Understand concepts. In this case, division by a to the nth power reduces the number of factors of a by n. But you're probably looking for a formula anyway, so here it goes. When we find this quotient, a to the nth divided by a to the nth, well, that's m factors of a in the numerator and n factors of a in the denominator. And removing the common factors of a, we'll have m minus n factors left over, which we can write as a to power m minus n. Or can we? There's one important restriction. Because this is a fraction, we can never have 0 in the denominator. So we can't let our base be 0. And so we can state our quotient rule as follows. For a base a not equal to 0, the quotient a to the nth power divided by a to the nth power is a to the power m minus n. So let's simplify a to the 8th divided by a to the 4th. So again, we don't need a rule or a formula because we know that a to the 8th is 8 factors of a and a to the 4th is 4 factors of a. We'll remove the common factors and get our quotient. Or we could use our theorem if we have the quotient with the same base, the quotient is the same base, and the exponent is the difference of the exponents. Now, there are some odd results. Let's try to simplify a to the third divided by a to the eighth. Using our theorem, we subtract the exponents and we get a to power negative 5, which says we take negative 5 factors of a and multiply them together. Together. How do we do that? Well, remember, don't memorize formulas. Instead, understand concepts. If we don't use our quotient rule, then a to the third divided by a to the eighth will be. And we could remove common factors and get. which we have 5 factors of a in the denominator, and so we could rewrite this as. Now, since we should get the same answer regardless of how we found it, we should agree that 1 over a to the 5th, which we found using the standard rules of algebra, is the same as a to the negative 5th, which we found using the rules of exponents. And so this leads to the following convention. We agree that as long as our base is not 0, a to the negative nth power is the same thing as 1 over 
a to the nth. So we could try to rewrite without a negative exponent 5 to the negative third power. So remember, a to the negative nth power is 1 over a to the nth. Same base, same exponent, just the opposite sign. So 5 to the negative third is 1 over 5 to the third. A special case occurs when we have a fraction to the negative 1 power. So 3 eighths to the negative first power. So the negative power translates as a 1 over. So that's 1 over 3 eighths. Now this is a compound fraction, but don't panic. Remember, you can always multiply by 1. For a not equal to 0, 1 is a divided by itself. And for b not equal to 0, if we multiply a fraction by its denominator, we'll eliminate the fraction. And these three rules allow us to simplify any fractional expression. So in the denominator, we'd like to get rid of this 8 denominator. So we can multiply denominator by 8 as long as we also multiply numerator by 8. Then finishing off our rules of fraction, we end up with our simplified form 8 thirds. And note that in the last example we found that 3 eighths to the negative first power is 8 thirds, the reciprocal. And in fact this is an instance of a general rule and we could say that a fraction to the negative first power is its reciprocal. Quotients lead us to one more interesting case. Suppose a is not equal to 0. Consider something like a to the 4th divided by a to the 4th. By the quotient rule, we find that this is a to power 0. But the concept of an exponent tells us that this quotient is... And so, if we want to get the same answer, we have to agree that a to the 0 is equal to 1. And this leads to another important convention. We agree that for a not equal to 0, a to power 0 is 1. So we could take some horrific base like 37 2 thirds, raise it to the 0 power, and again, as long as our base isn't 0, then raising it to the 0 power gives us 1, and so we have 37 2 thirds to the 0th power is 1.